When it comes to armored fighting vehicles, there's a lot of fabrications and misconceptions. I've made several videos talking about them, but they were all pretty disjointed. There was no particular topic of discussion, I just talked about subjects off the top of my head. For this video, I thought we could shake things up a bit. We're going to be focusing on tank ammunition. You wouldn't think there's a lot of misinformation on that, but there is a surprising amount. It's also a pretty interesting topic, so this should be pretty fun. But before we get into it, I want to talk about my sponsor. I'm partnered with Apex Gaming. They make pre-built PCs. If you're looking to upgrade, you should check them out. Link is in the description and comments. You can use my username as a discount code on checkout. Now back to the video. First, let's talk about our good old friend, Depleted Uranium. Depleted Uranium, or DU as it's more commonly known, is widely used in tank ammunition, specifically armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabo. It's even been used to make shaped charges, but that's a whole other can of worms. One of the most prolific users of DU is the United States. When justifying their use of depleted uranium, the US military has stated a few reasons. First, cost. Depleted uranium is very cheap and abundant. Second, density. DU is incredibly dense, even more so than most tungsten alloys. This helps its penetrative performance. Third, it self-sharpens. This keeps it from deforming during the penetration process, which also helps performance. Fourth, in the aspect we're interested in, it's pyrophoric. When the round strikes a target and self-sharpens, the bits that flake off combust. The US military has always claimed it adds an almost incendiary effect to the round, with the pyrophoric fragment supposedly setting fire to ammunition and fuel. Recently, far more interesting claims have flowed around, such as this effect physically melting a vehicle's occupants. When it hits, the, it creates such force that it, it bores a hole through it. A spray of white-hot metal fragments explode into the target, killing any occupants. It liquefies everything inside. You can technically come in with a hose and hose out the enemy tank crew. It just annihilates human matter. Now in fairness to the tanker talking, I don't think he actually believes the occupants are melted or anything like that. I think he's trying to say that they're more or less shredded by the spall. It's just that people think he's being literal. It should be fairly obvious, but people can't literally melt. Fat can, but not other tissue. It just burns. I've even seen people claim it imitates APHE, which is just... what? How would that work? It creates burning fragments. It doesn't create a miniature nuclear explosion or anything like that. What the US military claims is sort of a half-truth. Pyrophoric DU fragments could, in theory, contribute to ammo or fuel fires. However, the effect would be minimal. When the round penetrates, most of the sheared fragments are thrown back outside the vehicle, not inside. When hitting armor with DU, US tankers talk about seeing a flash, and that's what that is. It's taken as an indicator of increased damage, but in reality, it's kind of the opposite. DU being pyrophoric does have an added lethal effect, but it's not something people like to discuss. As these fragments burn the tank's interior, they form an aerosol of DU particles. DU's radioactivity is often heavily overstated, but its toxicity is not. If there are high levels of uranium in the air, just a few minutes of exposure can cause severe kidney issues down the line. Generally speaking, you don't want to be inhaling any kind of heavy metal. That's my free advice for the day. Next, let's talk about early shell types. First misconception is about cap shells, and it's something I've been guilty of saying before. Many people believe that for AP caps, they help a shell normalize against angled plates, i.e. it decreases the line of sight thickness for the shell. But this really isn't true. In reality, it's possible for a shell to simply shatter against the plates trying to penetrate. This is especially likely if the shell is going very, very fast. To keep this from happening, you can put a softer material in front of the penetrator. This essentially absorbs the impact, keeping the penetrator intact. AP caps do increase performance against angled plates, but not through normalization. The cap does this by reducing the critical ricochet angle of the round. Instead of the round turning along the angle of the plate and bouncing off, the cap helps to keep it more or less straight. This is not normalization, where the idea is that the round physically turns into the armor. To help visualize that, here's a crudely drawn diagram. These are often erroneously called ballistic caps as well, but that's a different mechanism. For ballistic caps, they essentially act as a windshield for the round, increasing aerodynamic performance. The second misconception relates to APHE. Many people believe that, since it had high explosive filler, it did much more damage than solid shot. That wasn't really the case. In British tests, they found that there was practically no difference. Unlike War Thunder, where APHE explodes out in a sphere of death, actual APHE fragments explode out in a very narrow cone. When solid shot penetrates, the spall it makes also forms a cone. Also, the impact could damage or destroy the fuse on APHE shells, which could lead to two outcomes. Either the shell pre-detonates on the armor, or there's no detonation at all. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you on the next one.